A woman drives a car from one city to another with different constant speeds along the trip. She drives at a speed of 90 kilometers per hour for 15 minutes, 95 kilometers per hour for 25 minutes. She makes a stop for 55 minutes, then continues going 45 kilometers per hour for 35 minutes. At that point, she reaches her destination. Question wants to know, what is the total distance between her starting point and the destination in kilometers? And also, what is her average speed for the entire trip? For a problem like this, it could be helpful to draw what's called a velocity versus time graph. It's not required to draw the graph, but if you can draw it, it is helpful. For a velocity versus time graph, we want v to be the vertical axis. In this case, the units would be kilometers per hour. And then we'll use t for time on the horizontal. And I'm going to put this in minutes. So I'm going to subdivide the times into these four intervals that they had mentioned. The first segment of her trip lasts for 15 minutes. Let's start with that. Zero minutes is of course the origin here. The next leg of her trip lasts for 25 minutes so that's going to be 25 minutes in addition to the 15. So this section here is 25. We have to actually add 15 plus 25 to get the clock reading at that point. So that's going to be 40 minutes from the start of the clock. For her third interval of the trip, she's going to be at rest for 55 total minutes. The 55 minutes is in addition to the 40 minutes that she already traveled. And I'm going to give these some symbols. I'll call this first time interval delta t1. Second time interval can be delta t2. And the third time interval is delta t3. There's one final time interval of 35 minutes. That can be delta t4. If we do 40 plus 55, that's going to be 95. And if we do 95 plus 35, that's 130 total minutes for this trip. So right off the bat here we can say the delta t total is going to be the sum of all the delta t's and that's going to be delta t1 plus delta t2 plus delta t3 plus delta t4. It's going to be 15 plus 25 plus 55 plus 35, taking us to a total time of 130 minutes for this trip. Now we'd like to make a graph of how large her velocities were during these four intervals. So I'm going to let uh, one of the intervals be represented by a rectangle here where the height of the rectangle tells you the velocity. For her first interval she was traveling at 90 kilometers per hour so we want this. During that time she's not changing her speed and so she's going to be traveling with constant speed throughout the entire 15 minutes. That means that I need a horizontal graph here. So my velocity is holding a constant value of 90. After that, she suddenly increases the velocity to a little bit bigger value. She's now traveling at 95 kilometers per hour for 25 minutes. Then she makes a stop, so her velocity is going to drop to being zero for 55 minutes. 
Finally, she'll pick the speed back up to 45 kilometers per hour. So let's show that. We can shade in these blocks. Our goal now is to find the distances that each of these blocks contributes to her overall trip. We could call the distances D1, D2, D3, and D4. Now, in order to find the distances, we would want to use a motion formula for constant velocity. It'll be that the distance is going to be the speed times the time. This is just a rearrangement of the formula. Average speed equals distance over time. We're only going to focus on one interval at a time. So it doesn't matter if we use average speed or just speed because this is going to be constant speed for each individual interval. So let's now make a little chart here. Uh, D1 is going to be our speed 1 times delta T1. D2 is going to be V2 times delta T2. Okay, so now we can multiply to find the distances. For D1, we're trying to multiply the 90, which is the speed, times the 15, which is the delta T. So we'll do 90 kilometers per hour times 15 minutes. There is a mismatch of the time units here. Uh, we see that hours here doesn't match with minutes. So we do want to correct for that. We could change the minutes into hours with a simple conversion factor here. Putting minutes on bottom so that they will cancel and then we'll put hours on top. There's 60 minutes in every hour. Turns out that here the hours would cancel as well. Our final units will actually be just kilometers, which is what we want. So that first leg contributes 22.5 kilometers of distance to the overall trip. Now let's multiply the height of the blue rectangle, which is V2, and that's the 95. We'll multiply that by the delta T2, which is 25. I get about 39.6 kilometers there. For V3, we see that the speed is actually zero. So this will contribute no distance to the overall trip, even though the time is 55 minutes. And then our final calculation is going to be 45 kilometers per hour times 35 minutes. It's about 26.3 kilometers. Now we can finally add up all the distances. It's going to be D1 plus D2 plus D3 plus D4. I get about 88.3 kilometers. And that'll be the total distance traveled in her trip. So that'll answer this first question. There's another interesting graph that we can make with this, and that would be a position versus time graph for the travel. The position will have the letter X, and it'll be in units of kilometers. We're going to have the start of the trip be in the origin of the coordinate system. 
from there, we want the vehicle to travel with constant velocity. This is going to require a sloped, straight line type of segment where the slope of the line is 90 kilometers per hour. At that point, the slope needs to change. Now, when we trace up this important point where there's a transition from one velocity to another, we need to, at that point, have a sudden change in the slope where the slope gets steeper. But it's still the same kind of curve. It's going to be a straight line segment. The slope now needs to become 95 kilometers per hour. At this junction, the velocity changes to being zero. So what we want at that point is we need a slope equal to zero. This requires a horizontal line. Finally, there's one more change in slope. Now the slope needs to become 45, which is quite a bit less steep than the one shown on the left. So this is creating a position versus time graph from a velocity versus time graph. The distances that she ends up being away from the starting point will be 22.5 kilometers. Uh, then when she gets to this point, we could add the 22.5 plus the 39.6. She is now 62.1 kilometers away at this location. Here she's in the same location. And then finally, we should just add that final 26.3, taking us to 88.3 or so kilometers. Finally, we're asked to determine the average speed for the entire trip. So the formula for that is going to be average speed equals the sum of all the distances traveled divided by all the time intervals combined. So what we can do is take our result of the total distance traveled, 88.3, and divide that by the total time of travel. Now they want the final answer in kilometers per hour. Right now my answer would be in kilometers per minute, so I am gonna do just one conversion factor here. We'll change the minutes down below here to hours. I put minutes above so that it cancels with the minutes below. And let's see what we get. 40.8 kilometers per hour is the average velocity. Graphically, the average velocity can be thought of as finding the slope of a segment that goes from your starting point of your interval to wherever the ending point of your interval is. In this problem, they asked us to find the average velocity for the whole trip. So that would be creating a triangle graphically from the very left side of the motion to the right side of the motion and then we would be wanting to find the slope of this imaginary triangle. If we could find the slope of it, that's another way to determine the average velocity for the interval. So this here is going to be the change in x. This here is the total time. So this is 88.3 divided by 130. Same calculation 
that we did here.